Additionally, I'm a member of INDEX, which is the library's group for young and emerging professionals. Make sure to sign up to receive our newsletter. Uh, I think the link to learn more about INDEX will appear below. Um, so tonight, INDEX presents another edition of Library Happy Hour. Sit back, enjoy a beverage, and uh, as we get started. Our guest tonight and I will be chatting about the unique partnership between the Art Academy of Cincinnati and the Public Library, how research and creativity go hand in hand, and ways to stay creative while staying at home. So please, as we're talking, send us your questions. Feel free to share ways you've been creative while staying at home in the chat box below. If you have pictures of projects, we'd love to see them. Um, uh, if you have favorite artists who have inspired you during this time, there are those with us. So uh, our guest this evening is Matthew Daler, a professor from the Art Academy of Cincinnati. Matt has collaborated with Index in the past for our Bad Art Nights, uh, held in person at Three Point Brewery, and also he played a huge role in our recent virtual Bad Art Night. So <laughs> welcome, Matt, for joining us. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Hey, Molly, yeah. how's it going? Hey, Matt. Um, so. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Art Academy and what your role is there? Sure. Well, the Art Academy is like a 150-year-old institution. Uh, we started or began kind of up on the hill attached to the Art Museum. Um, that's when I joined teaching there. It's about 17 or 18 years ago now. Uh, and then uh, we moved down to OTR as part of like the sort of revitalization of the neighborhood. Uh, trying to take the art academy out of that sort of museum setting and into like the urban core of the city. Um, you know, that's where artists thrive and love to be. And I think it was like a super great transition. It's awesome to be downtown. Uh, I came there to teach after graduate school, uh, like via Canada and via Memphis. Um, but I showed up there to teach uh, color theory, ended up teaching core and color theory at the same time, which was in the freshman program. And then slowly worked my way up to, uh, now I basically, I run the print media program. So I'm chair of the print program, uh, work on the galleries with people like Matt Coors and uh, just do a bunch of different things there. Really uh, work with the seniors a lot in the thesis program. So I kind of wear a bunch of different hats, but yeah, print media is where, where I hang out. That's awesome. Yeah, so a little background for those of you watching. I'm also an alumni of the Art Academy, a former student of our guest tonight. So um, him giving his background is for your all's benefit. Um, and so now as a reference librarian uh, at the main library, I've had the opportunity um, to work with instructors like Matt and Matt Porter, like you mentioned, to bring Art Academy students into the library to learn about ways uh, our resources can help them as artists. Um, you wouldn't normally think that research, um, going to the library might be really important to an artist, but it definitely is. Um, and ways that we've been able to interact with the students can include uh, orientation tours of the main branch, our maker space, in-depth explanations of the equipment there, uh, behind the scenes tours. I think we have an image of that. Uh, yeah, going behind the scenes in the stacks was amazing. I mean, the Art Academy itself has like got a really strong connection to to uh, the library anyway. Like the museum library, I used to go there all the time when we were up on the hill. You know, yeah, and that was like my first real experience with like art focused library. You know, you know? It was so amazing. It is amazing still. You know. And so much fun um, bringing them behind the scenes. We can't do that right now, obviously, but it's really great to look at the pictures that we have of those tours and uh, just see like the excitement on the students' faces. Totally. Um, and really, how it transformed their idea of um, libraries. And yeah, I mean, I'd say most of them like aren't even going to the library, right? I mean, they're looking at their phones or using other social platforms to get their information and their research. So like to go in behind the stacks and see all that information just kind of laid out for you. It's pretty awesome. It's been really great. Um, uh, um, and that's 
that is one way to find information. Um, but I think there's really something to be said for seeing like the real objects. Um, again, right now we can't do that. So we're trying to find other ways to connect and um, make that information available. Yeah. But another question for you. Sure. Uh, what would you say is your main goals as an art educator? Wow, that's a huge question. Main goals as an art educator. Uh, I mean, I think to create like functioning, um, inspired people in the community. Um, and that can come in many different ways. Like I don't, I don't want to, uh, even say that they have to make actual art objects, right? Like a lot of people might come to the art Academy and think like, Oh, I, I want to be a painter and I want to be a sculptor and I want to go into art museums and do these things. And there's so many other ways that you can like use your creative skills, um, in the world. Right. You know, um, you can go into politics, you can go into banking, you can go into so many different things and, and these creative skill sets that you take away, even though we're like drawing and painting, but we're like creative problem solving, you know, like solving issues, um, researching, uh, all of these things are like fundamental to like, I don't know, I think just being like an interested person in the world. So, um, yeah, I think that's what I want to do. I want to like, create people that are interested in, in, in solving problems in a creative way. Um, and I don't really care how you do that. <laughs> and I think uh, this is turning into a commercial for the Art Academy, but I feel like my education there <laughs> allowed me to be able to think more creatively. And um, you know, a lot of artists do have that innate creative uh, uh, ability or mindset, but I feel like teachers like you um, kind of really taught us ways to bring that out and to um, think about things in new ways. For sure, yeah, just thinking about what you're interested in, right? Like our own personal interests. Um, yeah. And then how to like use those towards the things that, you know, can help you be sustainable and, and you know, part of the larger community. Like I certainly didn't think I was gonna be painting murals when I started out as an artist, you know, but like yeah. it gravitated, I wanted to, do other things for sure. Uh, I definitely didn't plan to be doing that, um, but that just came through a bunch of different, you know, remote experiences over time. And you collaborate with people a lot. Yeah, that totally. Right? That's like, that's probably one of my primary functions these days is um, taking on larger projects and collaborating with other people. Um, so taking on like a management role um, or creative sort of direction role, um, concepting, production, um, those types of things. So, um, as well as the actual physical painting. So, um, you know, this image that you have here was, uh, we did that alongside Blink this year. Um, and that was with like Bunk News and Channel 77. So it was like a sensory sort of painted projected space that people got to, got to walk into and experience. So, um, or, or whether the collaboration is like with the client, you know, they come to me and they want, you know, their office space or their school or something done. Um, it's a collaboration between them and then, you know, the things that I can provide, you know. So, you know, collaborating with Fo Lang, you know, we did their first spot uh, on Finley Market and then, you know, got to do this and, you know, using some of their photos that they've taken from Vietnam and like collaging that with like parts of their brand identity. Um, you know, and that's where I just, you know, come in and throw it all in the pot and like try to turn out something that's creative. That's the creative problem solving, right? <laughs> so, and that, that's like fun for me. Um, so a lot of artists want to like make things like kind of all look the same or, or whatever, but like I like to kind of mix it up a little bit. I mean, it still has my print sensibility and um, those types of things. Like you can tell that it came from from me and from Chroma Projects or whatever, but that's that's the idea, you know? But I feel like collaboration is always, it's sort of like having a conversation with another artist. And For sure. And really, um, um, some, you know, sometimes your relationship with the person might not be the best, but you can still, like, um, kind of, you know, work together and make something um, that maybe speaks to that or speaks to the way uh, friendships or relationships kind of evolve. Yeah. It makes me better, too, you know, because then I'm just not, like, thinking about one thing, like, I'm learning from them and taking their opinions and getting their critical feedback and so on and so forth. And I think that stuff is really important too. Art school makes students a little bit thicker, 
Um, you know, so you have to be able to take feedback to progress and get better at things. So. Yeah, for sure. You have to learn to take the criticism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, as my students so will always say, I'm like super honest. So. <laughs> you know, um, criticism and uh, art school. I just wanted to have like a little bit of a conversation about the sure. project that we have been working on this past, yeah. was it last last year and then again this spring yeah so basically over like two like two school years you know we've done it essentially yeah so what we did was um i created a set of call numbers or i chose a set of call numbers from the library's catalog from random books and i made like you see up on the screen there a little card on this for uh we had a class visit, they came in, they chose at random a call number. And then they uh, went and retrieved the library work, uh, using the catalog, requesting a book, uh, and then checking the book out or having it put on hold if it was referenced. Um, and so they got their books and then Matt presented which if you want to explain that a little. Yeah, so after they got their books, right, um, they were to take these books and research them 360 degrees, like every little bit about it, right? Uh, it didn't even have to be necessarily the content. It could have been the font that was inside of it, the way the book was constructed, the color of the book, um, uh, the way it smelled, like anything about it. Um, and 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 they had to sort of like lay all of that out. They could take photographs, they could photocopy it if they weren't allowed to take it from the library, right? Because some of them were um, uh, from the stacks, correct? Where you can like- yeah, Some of them are from the stacks, they're reference. Reference they books, got you. Do you have really, we have some um, available in the building that um, they were able to use um, to capture images of the books. Yeah, so some of them were like taking photos on their phone and so on and so forth, so then, um, what they, the, what they do is they come and they present that research, uh, the things that they found out about the book. Um, and, and some pretty unique examples come up about it. You know, sometimes people are super direct, um, and they, you know, in this case, like kind of create imagery or create art about it. But, you know, this one, uh, the, uh, student Luis made, uh, was like really, 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 um, full you know, he created his own comic based on the sort of story of Roy Rogers and like learned about his persona and researched every little element about it and, and kind of made it fit into like what he was doing. Um, you know, some other people, um, well, one student was like super interested in like the paper itself and they made paper. <laughs> so it was like kind of void of even the, the, the sort of uh, the subject matter of the book um, and things like that. So there's, there's some, some really great, great results. And again, it's like another way of researching, right? Like I want them to think about as many different ways as possible. Like go and watch films that relate to Heidi Lamar or whatever, you know, like yeah. all of these things. I think a lot of times, I think the barrier was that uh, the students, the word research can be really heavy and difficult to manage if you're totally. not. Uh, and I mean, this is the primary focus of this class that I teach is, is all about yeah. research um, in all the different ways. And that's why this fits in so, so well, because, you know, people don't really realize that, you know, just walking on the street and just being an observant person can be seen as research, you know, just in terms of the things you might be interested in. So we encourage them to like watch, like you said, watch movies, watch documentaries, listen Absolutely. to a podcast about your topic. Um, just really sort of explore it, it like obsess about it. For sure. Um, and I thought they came up with some really cool um, uh, solutions. Like I really like this students with the Roy Rogers. I liked seeing his sketchbook. Yeah, it's incredible. The source and then the final products and just kind of like how he took all that in and created mm. something and and they didn't have to make a final product so that that's part of it too it's like it's really just about amassing as much information as possible um it's not so much about um 
creating this help. It's just as much um, sort of collecting and absorbing that you can that you can have and, and find on the subject matter. Yeah, I think I have one more example here. Yeah, um, this student had this book about scientists and scoundrels, all about hoaxes. Oh which, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a weird um, topic right now, I guess, in the world. Uh, people like to talk about hoaxes. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, mm -hmm. so I really like how she took this original uh, very tactile um, like web, almost like, you know, in shows when you see like a, a person kind of creating a web of connection. Yeah, the connecting and all the murder mysteries when they like connect all the dots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I thought it was amazing. Yeah, it's super uh, good. And then I guess I was I was curious um, about like if you have any what you've been doing or if you have any tips as somebody who teaches people about creativity, like what can people be doing right now in, in terms uh, of what can people be doing right now? So like for me Yeah, I am I am still working. Um, it's been sort of situational um, because uh, sort of access to certain places has been limited. Um, so, uh, but uh, I feel, you know, real blessed that I've been able to stay busy. Um, a lot of my clients uh, were just postponing things. So I've taken a lot of time to sort of uh, work on design, you know, prepare projects for when I am allowed to sort of have access and be out of this sort of quarantine situation. Um, mm -hmm. What, what the ways to stay creative? I, I really, I, I think this is such a good time to like really reset. I know that sounds weird, but um, like just to literally have the opportunity to kind of start over with things. Like we have all this extra time, like whether it's connecting with family because that's who we're around, or whether it's like connecting with your studio um, because you're at home. Um, thinking about the things that you have around, tasks that you haven't done or have been procrastinating about because you always say you don't have time to do that. Like you have all the time in the world mm -hmm. to do those things right now. You know, um, I think it's really taken a moment like for me to really like pause and, and, and think about what I've taken for granted, you know, just like going to Lowe's, <laughs> not like I can't go do those things, but like, it's more of a chore. And like, I have to think about more, think about more people. So like creatively problem solving, how to still go about my regular career instead of, sort of being upset about the fact that things might have dissolved or aren't happening. Um, yeah, definitely. That's, I'm bummed about all kinds of travel and all kinds of things that got canceled. Um, but the things that I do have, yeah. you've got to make the most of that and allow those to propel us forward. And so that's, you know, that's where I'm at with the creativity in lockdown is just, I don't know, just keep trying to do as much as you can. <laughs> I've been, I feel like I've been revisiting um, thing, uh, materials and kind of projects in the past. Like my, I was thinking about using the soap a lot. Yeah. Like the soap sculpture. Um, sure. Kind of, and like, I'm sure you're making very, tons um, of pies <laughs> <laughs> and cooking and well, stuff. I did just buy a big bushel of peaches. So we're going to get some pies made in a few weeks. Right. But, you know, um, so yeah, I just, I think things like that, like I said, like it doesn't even, you don't need to necessarily be painting or drawing. Like I definitely keep a schedule, you know, I do meetings and emails and, and then design time and then go outside time with the dogs and, you know, yeah. go, go to, you know, you just gotta just try to, try to stay normal instead of, you know, I definitely want to complain and freak out about it and whatever else, but like, what can you do? You gotta live with what's there. <laughs> Um, I think one other thing I wanted to share is that uh, um, like doing things is good, but I remember I interviewed um, another local artist, Denise Burge, several years ago. And one totally. The time you take away from your art and to recharge is just as important as the time that you're in the studio. So, 110%. 110%. Um, that close. And a lot of our recharge has been taken away from us, right? You know, like our outlets yeah. for recharge, you know, going to live events or traveling and getting away from something. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But it's yeah. Totally the part. You can go and do other things, you know. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Taking the dog for a walk in nature has definitely been. <laughs> yeah. Take the dogs for a small um, walk and then I'll go on a bigger walk because. <laughs> well, before we end, one last thing I wanted to mention was um, I just wanted to say a big congrats to all the graduating seniors at the Art Academy. I know under the best circumstances, like getting to that senior year, that senior thesis is hard work. Like it's a lot of work. Super hard. Yeah. A massive shout out to all the seniors. You know, we had planned to kind of put some, put some of their work out there tonight. Um, but you know, there's just so many that we're doing so many great things that, you know, and it's one big giant class of 2020. So. And I think, um, they're sharing in the chat down there, uh, a link to the YouTube channel of the school that does their some of them. So Sweet. go visit that, take a look. Um, yeah. And if you want to donate to our safe fund so that you can help support our students that are less fortunate than others please feel free to do that. It'd be really great. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, it's always so amazing. Yeah. Thanks for um, inviting and me to do this. With Torres. Yeah, of course. Um, Kent, next week we'll be chatting with Scott Torres of Sleep Caller. And uh, I'm told there will even be a performance of some live music. So amazing links and Matt's social media handles shared in the chat. So check those out and we can to see how you've been creative with important to you and just take care of yourselves and we'll see you again and thanks for being here tonight.